going back to the fence, and that's gone. There it is. Ace to win the set. It's caught. 20, 10, touchdown. This is going to be in the gap. Yes, oh, yes. Scores. Yes. Scores. Yes. 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 Centennial visiting Andover. Both teams are three and one, and both teams have been beaten by Maple Grove. But this is an outstanding early season matchup. Show. It is. It also revisits the section championship from last year, in which Andover took home a win and a trip to the state tournament. Andover, by the way, has won the last three matchups between these two teams, but uh, all is different because you're seeing Centennial. Who has outscored their opponents outside of that loss to Maple Grove? Uh, their last three consecutive wins, they've outscored their opponents 46 to six. Meanwhile, for Andover, uh, minus the uh, loss to Maple Grove, they've outscored their opponents 32 to 23 in their three wins. Outstanding teams going at it tonight. Weather is pleasant, cloudy skies. Could be a little rain later on. We'll see about that. The goaltenders for. Centennial, Peyton Bresney, now a junior, 3-1 and one on the year, will be defending the goal down to our left. She's a good one, and Andover, an outstanding goalie. And Eva Bach, 3-1, and one, 5.75 goals against, save percentage, 646. She's the real deal. Well, and, and both of these are really, you're going to see a couple of poised and confident goalies tonight for both of these squads. And meanwhile, Bresney last year had a record of 11-3, and three, and as you mentioned already, for uh, Eva Bach, an impressive last season, and she's off to a 3 and one start this year. We're going to do it over at the face-off to open it up. Uh, Callie Cody, a uh, senior uh, for the Centennial Cougars, and for Andover, it's Izzy Micah out there, and we'll see who controls that all-important opening face-off, and it looks like it's going to be Centennial. Their leading scorer, Ella O'Hearn, Player to watch, wearing number nine, sets up on the left, gets it over to the middle, and a jarpy with it, and they're going to swing it right back to the middle, and they, they want it in the hands of Cody with 10 goals and O'Hearn with 12. Cody wearing seven, and now O'Hearn swings it right back into the middle, but they, they have a good team, very patient, and they're going to try and get it into the middle. They get it to the eight-meter line. That one goes wide. Centennial's going to hang on. Looked like a shot attempt. That it did, and, and you could see the, the movement, the motion of Centennial and those Cougars from the beginning. They weave back and forth. They're just not standing outside the perimeter waiting for something to open. They like to try to create those openings with some, some constant motion uh, when they have possession. O'Hearn gets it right back into the middle, and here comes Centennial. That's Jarby. And running some action, trying to get it into the middle. Good D by Andover. And they really pride themselves. Brad Guy has talked about it that, you know, one of, one of the things we like to do with that great goalie is shut teams down first and Eva Bach and play good defense in front of her. Also keep in mind, uh, def on defense 37, Jaden Wilson, she leads the defense with five forced turnovers, and she likes to play pretty aggressive. And there's one just outside, or I should say just inside that 8-meter line, and this is going to be a free position for uh, Lily Browsen. One goal for the junior, and Browsen sets up over on the far side. Let's see Eva Bach, first test of the game right here. A couple of minutes in. And she's going to run in, head toward the goalie, and just power it over the shoulder of Bach. 1-0 Centennial. Yeah, she had some poise when she delivered that and uh, went up top to beat Bach, and uh, it's a second goal of the season for uh, Browsen. Meanwhile, a 1-0 lead for Centennial. Oh, they get on the board. 2-0-1 time of that goal. And we'll go right back to the middle and set it up. Centennial scored a lot of goals this year, 52 goals in four games and they've given up 17 meanwhile and over 32 goals 23 again so they played much tighter games but centennial wins that opening or at least gets a ball off that opening face off here's Andover right back the other way that was a nice catch on the fly 
And here comes Handover as they move it to our left there in white with the gold numerals. And they will set it up for the first time in the game. Three wins for Andover have come 12 to four over Rogers, 12 to one over Blaine, and an impressive 5-4 win over Elk River. Yeah, that was a good win. Elk River, a good team. There's a ground ball there. Lensmeyer scoops it up, and Andover sets it up. Lensmeyer, the goal line. Yeah, Lensmeyer actually had the game-winning goal in that Elk River win. They were up at that point 5-1 when she scored, and Elk River made their way back, scored three unanswered goals to cut that deficit to 5-4 before the Huskies pulled out the win. There's a check Blair. there. We're going to get a stoppage. Blair clock. goes down hard for Andover. That was a shove, and we're going to get the training staff out. And we've got a break in the action for an indo uh, injury, but looks like Lensmeyer got shoved down, and now she's going to peel herself off the turf, but she got hit up high. That might have been Avery Sauber who put that stick to Lensmeyer, almost a, like a cross check. And Evers is going to trot on, and... Lensmeyer is going to come out holding potentially that left shoulder. But she took a real shot over there. And I, I, I'm surprised, honestly, that they they didn't send the Centennial player off. So Andover would be a player up, but uh, apparently not. Yeah. A little colder here tonight, so maybe that will slow some of the swelling if that's in case. You can't shake it off. And that, that, it, but that's actually Shruby, not. No, you're right. That is Shruby. Not if that is Shruby. Four goals, four assists. She'll, she'll, she'll go to the sideline. There's Delich leading Andover with 12 goals. Delich has just had a great year already. Nice move to the front. And that save made by Bresney. She walked right in there, and Bresney made the save. She tried to go up high, and Bresney read it. Yeah, Bresney stayed calm and cool and kept the stick in the right spot. So a big save there early. Here comes Centennial Whitworth right up the middle of the field. Ground ball picked up by the Andover Huskies, and they'll come right back the other way. Good play there by Andover as they move it right back down the field. That's Tammy. Tammy gets pushed along the sideline. She'll continue play. Good heads up. They keep it on the move. Tammy tries to power her way in and is turned away and will go behind the net. She gets it out just to the right side. That was Ella Thors, and she'll have to back it out. Now right into the middle as Andover sets it up and swing it around. That is Lunsmeyer there. Had it knocked away. Good play by Centennial with the stick. Here come the Cougars the other way. A good run. This is Browsen, and she'll get it back to O'Hearn. Once again, leading the way in goals. 12 goals, 13 assists. Top point get around the team as we approach 20 minutes to play in half number one. Yeah, definitely O'Hearn with that score ability. She actually had 61 goals and 20 assists last season, did O'Hearn. Jarby put it on the ground but got it back. She was turned away. And over really getting in tight in front of the goalkeeper, Eva Bach. And they have it in the hands of O'Hearn. Against her move, turned away. They get it further inside. There's a shot and a goal. What a feed, O'Hearn to Cody. And Cody has the goal, and Centennial up 2-0 early. Yeah, Cody was able to get deep inside, and not a whole lot that Bach could do. as She put the net up, stayed squared to the ball, but Colby, excuse me, Callie Cody, finds the back of the net. That's her 11th goal of the season, the first here tonight. Cody actually had four goals in the game earlier this year versus Spring Lake Park. All right, Joe, and are you going to give the assist to O'Hearn? you got to give her an assist. That was pretty from about the eight-meter line into about four meters out. And I'm still, I, I right. still have to think about okay, that. Okay. Let me pontificate, uh, and then I'll have a decision for you. And Yes, that will be an assist. <laughs> <laughs> and right back out into the middle, so a good start for Centennial in this battle of three-and-one teams. Here on a Wednesday night, and on that faceoff, Elizabeth Clough for Centennial, controlled by Andover. Look at that speed. And here come the Huskies right into the attack. They get it to the side of the net a little too far, 
But Andover is able to run it down back there. Good hustle play by Andover as they set it up over on the right side. And that was Thornton. She powers her way in front. Shot. That one goes wide. Huskies are going to hang on as they had a player deep. But good move by Thornton as she dot, you know, darted right to the front of the net. And she did hammer was guarding on the backside very closely on that play. We were able to get the, the burst there. But Centennial, again, hammer number three, excellent on defense. Eighth grader. That's pretty impressive. Here's another chance blocked That's away post. by Bresney. Or the post. Gold tender's best friend. Bresney looked like she may have got a piece of it, but it got ironed. But Andover hangs on over on the far side. We got a ground ball situation. Andover trying to gain control. That is Ella Thorson over there. Way over on that far sideline. And now they get it to the goal line extended. And back on the field was Shruby, who got banged up. Into the middle, ground ball. And it's going to be controlled by Centennial and eventually uh, the goalie, Bresney. Good to Bresney. see Shruby back out there after yes. she went down hard. I was going to say that as well. And I was also going to mention Bresney has a great, accurate, and quick outlet pass for Centennial, the junior goalie. Here come the Cougars back the other way. Good power move by Ella Wiest. Nine goals, two assists, gives it up. Here's Browsen. Browsen's going to head down to the goal line extended. They'll set up behind the net as we approach 18 to play here in half number one. So far, Centennial to 2-0 lead. Get it right back out into the middle. Set it up, as you mentioned. Huskies will be very active defensively, trying to eliminate any seams or able to cut through for a good shot. Way back behind the net. Back then, it looks like uh, we got a show. Contact there. And I think that's going to come inside that eight meter line and this is going to be another free position. She was walking around the perimeter and said, what do you want? She says, nothing. I'm just browsing. And I was browsing with the ball, by the way. You've been and waiting to do that all day. <laughs> you can, that one goes wide. Just wide, but uh, browsing Clough. the goal. Second, first goal of the game. Unable to convert there. Yeah, Clough sent it just wide, wearing number 23. Coming up on 17 to go. Centennial hangs on. And they have it down behind the net. And you can see the movement by Centennial. I mean, not fierce, hard cuts, but there is motion. This is where Andover needs to take advantage of a ground ball, and they do. Yeah, I think this is a key differential thus far as well for Andover. Uh, not only the outlet pass ability there by Bach, but in ground balls. I'll get you more information on that, Steve. Here's Andover getting their run down the field. They get it into the middle in a good position. Here's an opportunity right in front. And that one is picked off by Centennial. Good defensive play. Caitlin Hemmer, the eighth grader. And the Cougars in red come back the other way and move it forward. On the run over there on the far side, Coolin Camp. Digging Coolin Camp, a sophomore. And that goes out of bounds, and it'll be Andover ball. And still plenty of time in the game, 16 minutes to go. And Andover has had some looks, but uh, they hit a pipe, and Peyton Bresney's made a couple of saves so far. O'Hearn comes back in, as does number 16, Anna Jarpy. Here's Delich. Tries to work up the sideline, spins around. Good move by Delich to midfield. And Merrill Delich gets it into the middle. They give it up. Nice feed. That's Dennis. Cuts it back out. Now they'll try and swing it around on the perimeter and get it set up and get a good look here. That's Delich again way out there. And now Finnis. They play catch. Ten minutes already gone, Steve. It's been a fast-moving first half. Delich move into the middle, put it on the ground, and it's taken right back. That's Noel Hemmer, a senior. And then Andover gets it right back. Well, that was a nifty play, picking up the ground ball over there. I mentioned it before, but Andover is winning that ground ball battle. In fact, they lead that battle 
eighty to thirty eight so far this, coming into tonight's game. That's a that's a huge differential. That's Tammy wearing fifteen, holding it. Centennial. Oh, up wait for this to play. Centennial, by the way, on ground balls, has a seventy eight to fifty six advantage coming into tonight's game. Tammy puts it down low. Did it get blocked by Bresney? It did. Now they're going to call it a goal that it went over the end line, an official down deep. So it's going to be Tammy with her third goal of the year for Andover, and it's 2-1. to one. She went downstairs, and it snuck over that goal line before Bresney tried to pull it back. But it is a good goal for Emma Tammy. And the time of that goal, 10-31, it's 2-1, to one, brand new game. Yeah, it is. Cut the deficit in half. Almost a reset. Let's see how they respond here. Either Andover or Centennial as they get ready for the draw. Mike go for Andover, and it's Cody for Centennial. Out in the middle of the field. And they pop that one in the air, and it's batted forward. Nifty play by Cody, and Centennial's going to get it ahead. So they control that all-important draw. And now it's Coolin Camp. Well, it? Camp down to the end line and now sets it up behind, gives it up over there on the left. There's an opportunity for O'Hearn. O'Hearn trying to find an alley can't. They've done a nice job on her as O'Hearn goes all the way behind the net. They, they have a good idea who the leading scorer is. You can tell mm -hmm. that they are all over her. And she is being guarded by Delich. Well, you can't come off of Cody as well. Last year, Cody had 46 goals, 12 assists. That was a centennial team that produced 249 goals last season. Sharpie feed inside ground ball off the stick of Cody. That was a good cut, but she couldn't catch it. And now Eva Box going to send it off to her right, and Andover's going to try and clear the zone. Now just down 2-1. to one. And this, this is the kind of game Andover wants. They, they want to keep that score down. They don't want Centennial anywhere near their over 11 goal a game average. Correct. And Centennial, by the way, in their three wins this season, they've come via Spring Lake Park. Also, Blaine, and in addition to that, was a, excuse me, OPC, and an Anoka. Uh, there are three teams that they've defeated earlier this year. What a clear by Bach. What a, what a play. Yeah. Andover trying to set up a break, and they're going to get it. And that's going to be at the 12-meter fan. And Micah has it right there. So quite a play is they brought everybody up to midfield, and then Bach sent it over the top. Now Andover with a chance to tie here. Of course, the head coach, Brad Geis, who's led this team to two consecutive state tournaments. Girls lacrosse quad. Sherby put it on the ground. And he's going to get it out on the 12-meter line. So it's not a free position, but there was a foul. So not, now an opportunity for Sherby here. She had to leave the game briefly. Double team comes, trying to find someone to get it to. Another double team. She gets hit from behind. And th that. She's taking a beating yeah. here in the first half. It's yeah, they, they have been all over her. She'll be coming in four goals, four assists for the senior. And she's going to get it again out at that 12-meter line. Ella O'Hearn there with the foul as they continue to circle. Shruby and somebody's got a punisher in a physical sense there. But now Andover will take it behind the cage. Thorson back there. Trying to find Delich. She wasn't available. Delich over on the right. Now Thorson moves toward the middle and shoved back to the outside. This is Lensmeyer. And now here's Delich trying to work around a pick with some speed trying to give it up she got bumped that was out at the 12 meter and, and that's the key is not take that foul inside the eight and that free position if you're going to be you know doing a little bumping and and pushing and shoving this one ultimately does come at the eight here's a chance 
And that one is knocked away. And that was a good look for Delich. And and they did they did give her the free position there, which surprised me. I thought it was out closer to the twelve, but here comes Centennial after that shot and ground ball, and they're on the move. Anna Jarpy right up the middle of the field with speed. She's handled the ball quite a bit, coming up on 10 to go in the half. 2-1 Centennial. Tight game as we expect. It's been good. Both teams have played well. 2-1, and then talk to both coaches, and you ask them, okay, so both of you have played Maple Grove already. Annually, they're just a very good team up and down, but you've taken a loss this year. What differentiates this team, Maple Grove? And they said strong defense. They are so strong on defense. you got to work to find a seam, and they have just a commitment to their game. Oh, her and feet into the middle to Cody again in a goal. Great. She drew a triple team that left Cody open in front for the second time tonight. They team up. Centennial leads it 3-1. to one. That was pretty. Yeah, for Cody, her 12th goal of the season, and you're right, uh, Steve, she just draws. O'Hearn draws the defenders. In fact, they triangulated her that time, and she got the dime to Cody, and Cody buried it back of the net past Bach. And second goal of the night here for Kaylee Cody, her 12th of the season, and another assist for O'Hearn. She had 13 assists coming into this game. Now it's 15. David Thompson, Joe Rulin, our QCTV crew from Andover, and we're keeping our fingers crossed that the rain stays away and through out the game tonight. And that that is very impressive. And Brad Geis calls the timeout saying, look, you know, we, we, we've got to cover O'Hearn, but we can't let Cody loose in, in front of Eva Bach that way because you're really putting the goalie in a bad spot. So I'm sure this is much about you know, setting up defensively and how they want to play down low. And he knows the team so well. He knows the opponent so well, does Coach Geis. I always find it amazing that before the game, I'll usually ask him, hey, Coach Geis, what kind of a score do you think you need here tonight for the win? And he's almost dead right on, uh, you know, and, and maybe a goal one way or the other. But for the most part, he smack right on. We need to score this many goals, and we need to hold them to X amount of goals if we're going to win. If we get to a high-scoring game, that's yeah. not going to be us for tonight, maybe last year on some of the different components. But we need to be able to have uh, successful possessions and uh, control the amount of goals. Uh, and uh, I didn't get a chance to talk to him tonight, but there you get a look at the head coach for Centennial, Haley Berg. And uh, Haley Berg in her second season, she played. Uh, she graduated from Centennial and then played club across at St. Thomas. Yeah, it, 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 it's so good to see these former players coming back, coaching the game, and we, we all know about Centennial here in the North was Suburban Conference. Uh, outstanding hockey, boys and girls, uh, very competitive lacrosse, boys and girls, and th this is turning into a really nice rivalry in a lot of different sports. Uh, Centennial, and, and you think about it, oh, Centennial, it, it's pretty close by in reality. It's, it's, a, it's a pretty quick trip from most of the spots in the conference. And, and certainly uh, the, their football program, their athletic programs, they have wonderful facilities over at Centennial. So it is a, a great fit in the Northwest Suburban. That it is. As I mentioned, the Huskies have won the last three games with these two teams. The one game they lost in 2021 was an 8-7 loss, and that's when Bresney was a freshman. And Centennial scored with about a minute left in that game. Huskies came back to beat Centennial in the section playoffs, and, of course, they beat Centennial twice last year in the regular season and, of course, in the section championship to advance to the state tournament. So Bresney's done a really nice job in this game. Could easily be 3-3. She's made some outstanding saves in this game. So it has been very even, and it's been a good one. Delich out there to take the faceoff for Andover, and Centennial will send out Clough. So Clough against Delich. We'll see how it turns out. Huge part of this game, boys and girls. What happens out there in the faceoff? It spins the mojo the moment they get control. and Clough got it done. Centennial does it right here. 
We got a ground ball to the near side. Will it get out of bounds? Looks like it'll slow down on that turf. Fight for that ground ball. And it's grabbed there by Maria Waller, a junior for Centennial, right back on the ground. Good job by Andover fighting for it in the middle of it. Uh, Myla Evers. And also Alstron in there trying to dig it free. They move it ahead. Another ground ball picked up by Andover. And the Huskies power their way out of there. Nice play defensively on that ground ball. And we got a shove. And continuing her forward momentum is Tammy. Nice job by Emma Tammy. Uh, the senior getting to the side of the net goes all the way around. Quite a run for her. Tammy trying to get to the front. Puts it on the ground and picks it up. But uh, she might get a free position. So she did a lot of work, and now she's got to catch her breath. She does a big run that time for Tammy with conviction. She went to FedEx. Tammy tries to go upstairs. A little too high. And it's picked off by Centennial. They put it right on the ground. Ground ball kicked around, headed out toward midfield. No one's able to gain control. Teams from both sides after it. And now it's batted forward, kind of a nifty play there by Browson. And now it goes all the way to Eva Bach, and she'll gather it in for Andover. Quick clear. And I love those quick decisions, Joe. She gets it out of there in a hurry. She does, absolutely. A quick catch and release. Andover right back the other way. Another ground ball. Play a little choppy right now. Both teams being very aggressive. This is Thorson over on the far side. And, and we're going to get a yellow. Oh, a red? Uh, oh, it is a red. Oh, my. And he, I, I don't think he meant to do that. He said, hold on a second. <laughs> 17. It's not a red. That's Waller. Yeah. Yeah, it was almost like a cross jack to the back of Thorson. Thorson, of course. He, he just thought a, it was a yellow. A high school hockey team. So she'll take a knee, and this is an opportunity for Andover as there'll be a player up. And Cody's going to come on. And coming over to take that knee is Waller. And you don't see that a ton in the girls' game. You see it a lot in the boys' game. But uh, right now, an opportunity for Andover. Here with 7.47. 3-1 game Centennial. And Andover has it. Let's see what they can do. Here's Thorson. Some good motion inside the fan. Now she'll swing it back out on top. And it's set up there. And now we have a stop. I think there was something off the play. Yeah, there, there, there's certainly a foul on Centennial somewhere. And now a chance for Andover at the 12-meter fan. Let's see how they conduct this uh, free position. Trifles gets it down too far, and that's going to be a turnover on Andover, I believe. It will be. They, they tried to get it down into the far corner, and now they get it to the goalie, Bresney. And Bresney's going to decide. They'll swing it off to her left. Cougars put it on the ground quickly. That was a missed opportunity for sure for Andover right there. Yeah, that turnover, very uncommon for Andover. Excellent passing team. And powering her way forward. Fenstermacher, good run. Got shot. Or excuse me, that is O'Hearn. O'Hearn powered her way forward. Retreats into her own end, still being shoved. And now she'll give it up. Back the other way. Jarpy. Anna Jarpy has handled it quite a bit. And you can tell they're being a lot more aggressive further out. There's a nice catch. That is Weist. Or Weist has it. Weist. Or Centennial. No line extended. Six to go in the half. They're up three to one. Centennial content with looking for just that right avenue and taking some time off the clock. We talked about it during the last broadcast, but I can certainly see... That shot clock coming into play next year here for girls high school lacrosse. Trying to keep the pace of that game going. Outside again and working it way outside the parameter. Yeah, the Cody, perimeter here. Yep. Cody had it, a couple of goals. Nifty assist by O'Hearn. Just pretty lacrosse goals. 
And now here's Centennial working their way in on the side. That's Ella Wiest again. Certainly not a sense of urgency for Centennial. And I, I, you know, honestly, Joe, I don't know how that rule is going to work. If you get it over midfield, there's you have to take a, a shot within 30 seconds or a minute. You know, and then if the, the shot goes all the way through, if you hang on, I, I, I'm not how sure how it would be structured, but I think it would be uh, a good addition to the game to add a shot clock. Yeah, I'm not sure it would be identical to the one in college for women's lacrosse. I think that's at 90 seconds from the time that they cross the field. Yep. But back out and, again. And that almost seems a little long as well. Mm -hmm. You know, that a minute might be a better number. We'll see. Here's O'Hearn forcing her way in front. And great position there by Eva Bach, forcing her to send it over the net. Centennial will hang on, but Bach came out, met her, cut down that angle. Beautiful job. Defensively, they came over. A little bit of contact, but puts the shot over the top, but it's still Centennial that maintains the possession. Beast has it. They've now had it for about two minutes and coming up on 30 seconds. Knocked out of there by Centennial. Ground ball opportunity. Trying to stay on side was Dennis. We got a ground ball. Big spot here, and Andover gets it back. That's huge. Down three to one. Huskies here. forced a nice turn over there. Yeah, and that was Dennis, and then it's taken right back by O'Hearn. O'Hearn in one on three. She'll wait for help and back it right out of there. So, Ella O'Hearn did quite a job to get it back for her team. Just when Andover was getting ready to break it through at midfield. The errant pass took place, but now Andover has it back again with we uh, just about three minutes left here in this first half. Good job over there by Lensmeyer. And now it's right back to Centennial. Boy, they have just gone back and forth here as of late as we come up on three to play in the half all the way over to the near side. Coolin Camp. And now they get it into the middle. That is Anna Jarpy. Senior Mitty and gives it to O'Hearn. Put it on the ground, but no problem. Plenty of time here for O'Hearn to run a play. Centennial again, 11-6 loss, first game of the season to Maple Grove, and we get a whistle. And she just turned it over. I thought they were going to call a free position at that eight-meter line, but she went down, and Andover's going to get it back, so another break. Let's see what the Huskies are able to do to, with it. Centennial works, or Andover, Lensmeyer, good move, spins along the sideline. Lensmeyer looking for someone to pass to, gets it down low. That's Thorson, and Thorson's going to set it up. Andover down by two, late in the half, coming up on two to play in this first half. Thorson works her way into the middle, just outside that 12-meter fan. Trying to get someone free. Venice comes over there. And now they send it over to the near side. Trying to catch it from the back is O'Hearn. Engler works her way in. And a goal for Engler. I think that's my Engler's fourth of the year. Yeah, I think you're right. And O'Hearn was trying to get at and knock that ball loose from behind. But uh, I'll tell you. Engler did a great job of feeling that pressure and closed the deal and went top shelf, went with the top cheddar that time, did Engler. As you mentioned, Steve, her fourth goal of the season, the first tonight, and they cut into that deficit. Now it's just back to one with 139 to go here in the first. Yeah, big, big goal as they finally come up with the turnover and take it back the other way and it was a great run by Lensmeyer to get it into the attack zone and then a nice move by Engler to get the goal time of that goal 23-21 3-2 and now a big draw plenty of time for both teams so this one is huge here late in the half no one popped in the air Delich trying to control Cody trying to control ground ball still there and it's grabbed on the fly by Centennial. This is Munger. Or actually, Jarpy takes it back there. Yeah, Munger is out, by the way, for tonight. Yeah, it is Jarpy. Munger wearing 15, Jarpy 16. 
And Jarpy has it over on the left. She's handled quite a bit. Just outside the eight. Swings it off to the left. O'Hearn into the middle. Walks right in and gets the goal. Uh, gave it right back. And O'Hearn gets her first of the game, her third point. She had a little lean to her like that, like Kaprizov for the Wild. As she leaned to make her turn. Precise cutting and then buried it. Top shelf to beat Bach. Excellent move. You can see she hit some burst speed just when she needed it. And O'Hearn collects her 13th goal of the season and has put Centennial back up by two goals, 4-2. to two. Yeah, so Andover pulled it within one at 23-21. And then just 38 seconds later, it was O'Hearn with her first of the night. She has two pretty assists, beating Cody down low. This one popped into the air, grabbed out of the air beautifully by Lensmeyer, and Lensmeyer begins her run. Still plenty of time, under a minute to go. She's sent over to the sideline, spins out of there, stays in bounds, and now Andover trying to get set up defensively. Perrin, Madeline Perrin defensively, forced to ground ball, trying to gather it in. Is Thorson over in that far corner, I believe? It's a long way away, and it is Thorson, and she's going to begin her run. Set it up behind the net. Great chance for Andover to pull back to within one. Ball on the ground. Popped out of there. And we're going to get. Yeah, there's going to be a it foul, is. but it's going to be out at the 12, I believe, Joe. Stop the clock with 17 seconds left and a half. And here's Engler again. Let's see if, what she does if she steps or gives it up to a cutter. She's going to step in, give it up to the cutter in the middle. It's caught. Shot, Delich, I think she got bumped. This is going to be a free position for Delich yeah. with 11.4. Big spot here for Delich as she looks to get on the board. And Leading you, scorer for Andover coming in. Yep, and you called it, Steve. She looked for that pass. The Andover uh, attacker and got it. Here's Delich's shot and blocked away by Bresney. Big save. With seconds remaining in the half. Oh, Andover got what they wanted. Players go down. That's the end of the half. So they got it in the hands of Delich. She had that free position. And Brisney with a big save. But we've had a good first half, and Centennial leads Andover 4-2, to two, Joe. We've got a physical first yeah. half. Very stingy for both of these teams defensively, and, and certainly Centennial doing some leaning on the end over plays with the defense, but uh, showing some great scoring ability as well. Joe's going to make omelets. We'll be back with the second <laughs> half in a moment from Andover. Centennial leads the Huskies 4-2 to two on QCTV. It might be hard to believe, but warm weather is right around the corner. The 2023 season passes to the Aquatic Center are available right now for purchase. The swimming season is from June 3rd to August 27th, and one pass for the whole season is just $50 and $30 for seniors 62 and up. Season pass holders receive priority admission during open swim. Children under one year of age are free, and if you purchase season passes from 2018 through 2022 and still have your scan card, this is renewable. Keep it with you and you can use the same one this year. 
Single day passes are just $7 each and kids five and under may receive a discounted admission. To purchase an Aquatic Center Season Pass or to look at other rates and opportunities including swimming lessons, seasonal job opportunities, and other special events offered, please visit the City of Anoka Parks and Recs website and click on the Aquatic Center tab. Interested in booking a spacious venue for your next event? Well, you're in luck because the City of Champlin is inviting you to come take a tour. Located along the Mississippi River, this brand new Mississippi Crossings Event Center is a spacious building offering a multi-use facility to suit your needs with incredible views of the Mississippi River. The Mississippi Crossings Event Center will be open for tours and you can find detailed information at the city's Facebook page or you can reach out directly. For additional information, please visit mississippicrossings.com and we will see you at the Event Center. I did cheerleading through high school. I went to the Colts cheerleading and I loved it. Colts! I was about to go to work and I collapsed. Thanks to the American Heart Association's support of life-saving research and medical breakthroughs, Tessa got her life back after suffering from a debilitating and near fatal stroke. <laughs> To learn more about how the American Heart Association is saving lives, go to helpheart.org. Um, can I get the now bar, please? One dollar. Have a good one. Got it. Hey, what's going on? Hey. hey let me get a now bar. Sure. One dollar. Appreciate you. Got it. At the U.S. Center for Safe Sport, we see champions everywhere we look. In every sport, on every court, we're building a foundation to ensure all athletes are safe, supported, and strengthened. At the U.S. Center for Safe Sport, ending abuse is not just our job. It's our promise. Um, can I get the now bar, please? One dollar. Have a good one. Got it. Hey, what's going on? Hey. Let me get a now bar. Sure. One dollar. Appreciate you. Got it.
At the U.S. Center for Safe Sport, we see change. Back in Andover, girls lacrosse tonight. And it's a good one, 3-1 and one Centennial against 3-1 and one Andover. Both teams suffered defeats at the hands of Maple Grove early in this season. And we've had a good one. Centennial leads it 4-2 to two at the half. Two goals in this game to Callie Cody and assist to Ella O'Hearn. O'Hearn has a goal in her own right. And for Andover, goals in the game from Tammy and from Engler. It's 4-2. to two. It's been a good one. We switch sides. The goaltender for Centennial to our right, Peyton Bresney, has made some big saves. And a good job, as always, from Eva Bach for Andover, the goaltender to our left. Well, the winner of this game, and such a critical component, it may seem early in the season, but uh, usually the winner of that regular season game or the records kind of indicate who will be the home team come section play. Granted, it seems kind of crazy to be talking about sections as we're into the this now the fifth game of the season, but the high school lacrosse season for the girls concludes on May 24th. It goes so quick, and Andover took control of that faceoff. That was a big deal. Merrill Delich got it done. It was scooped up by Engler, but Centennial got it right back, and now the Cougars in red on attack. Cody with it, sends it into the middle. That is Jarpy, and Jarpy sends it off to O'Hearn. O'Hearn, two very nice assists and a pretty goal as well in this game. Coming in the team leader now, 13 goals, 15 assists to lead Centennial. And now it's Jarpy just inside that 12-meter fan, steps to the 8. And we got a flag in the air, and we're going to see who this is on. And I think Andover committed the foul, and now it's Jarpy out at the 12. Always interesting to watch the strategies right here. Jarpy gets bumped, tries to get it outside, ground ball. That shove is going to be a foul on Andover, and Jarpy's going to get it back out at the 12. That's good news for Andover. Correct, but it has been a very physical game. Uh, no one has given up any easy exits or entrance towards that goal, and they're making one another work. Each other team work hard for each pass. They get some motion. The downside here for Andover is that you're down by two goals, and Centennial has possession of the ball, so they can take any time necessary here to work the clock and work for a perfect uh, venue to shoot just under 23 now to play in the second half. So they get it out on top, and here's O'Hearn, big part of their scoring threat. She gets it inside. Jarpy had it blocked away by Bach. Oh, good play by Bach as she got that stick on it, knocked it away, and I think Andover's going to pick it up. Huge save. For Eva Bach there. Especially coming off that stick of O'Hearn. O'Hearn had three goals and four assists versus Spring Lake Park. She had four goals and four assists versus Anoka. And four goals and four assists versus OPC. Bach's going to send it off to her right. And here's Tammy. Tammy gets decked back there. Wow, did she get lit up. Oh, So Andover's going to hang on to it. 4-2. And, uh, gosh, since we let Mass call the game here at Andover, haven't had a chance there. You see the check there and some major contact. The player goes down. Andover picked up a huge 5-4 win over a speedy Elk River team. That was a huge win. As, uh, you know, that's one that could really buy them a good seed or some home field time comes section play. But uh, Elk River's a tough team. Uh, and uh, Centennial has yet to play them as well. Good job by Cody. It, 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 as they have just been all over the ball, even in the end over end, here are the Huskies. Micah, she got bumped along the sideline. And, and she that just is weast. Can, yep. Continues her way down the field. And I, and I do like the, the change that was made a couple of years ago, maybe three years ago, whatever it is, where they, they didn't have to stop and reset. 
right. you know, the continuous play. Yeah, and that's kind of the way. Yeah, that's the way you usually approach stop signs, from what I hear too. Just uh, uh, never. Just to kind of uh, roll through, uh, not a, a definite stop. Uh, we're going to play some video of uh, your trip up here tonight. That's and Dennis. Your friend and there's the chance. To no, I I feel, <laughs> feel free. I am a law-abiding right. citizen, um, and abide by all the rules. 21 minutes to go in the game. Centennial gets it in the hands of their goalie. That's Bresney. Peyton Bresney's done a nice job. And really the difference so far, she's made a couple of huge saves, including that one on Delich on that free position at the end of the half. Uh, looms large at the moment. Here's quite a run for Centennial as they get it all the way down the field. See that athleticism from O'Hearn? Is, oh, man. Just just. You know, you see it from both teams. They have, they can have those long strides, athletic strides. There's a chance to pick up on that backside by that one is uh, Cheeseboro. So Centennial sets up down behind the net, up four to two. A defensive struggle here tonight at Andover. What looks like the rain's going to hold out. There is a, there is a threat of rain tonight. It looks like it's going to be a rainy few days coming up but uh, dry so far there's Cody two goals in the first half terrific assist by Ella O'Hearn and now it's Jarpy who had that terrific run down the field a moment ago and they are really setting it up outside and now it's O'Hearn trying to deal with the ground ball and Andover kind of setting back defensively right now O'Hearn in the middle at the 8 backs out way over to the right and now it's Jarby again. We'll try and go inside and turned away. O'Hearn with that key goal just before the half. Andover had cut the deficit from 3-1 yeah, three three to 3-2. To to and then uh, it was O'Hearn who was able to make a burst move, lean in and find the back of the net against Bach. To get them back up to a two goal lead. Cody inside to Jarpy and her shot saved by Bach. Another good high low play, and now here's Andover. That was a gorgeous outlet pass by Bach. Yeah, terrific. Back the other way comes Andover. Lensmeyer gives it up on the right. They'll get it set up. Moving down toward the corner is Ella Thorson. And now an opportunity for Andover. They've really got to make the most of this. And Bach, see if they yeah. can get some room. Hey, and Bach literally threw. We got the NFL draft coming tomorrow night, but it was Bach who threw open Lensmeyer in traffic for an easy out. And now setting up a chance. They get it inside, and Andover scores. Beautiful feed from Thorson down low. That was terrific. And I think she hit. Lensmeyer. It was Delich. Delich is going to get the goal. That'll be her first of the game. But that was set up by Thorson. Scored at every game this season, and now she can add to that as well. Even more importantly, a nice dime by Thorson to a cutting Delich. And Delich picks up goal number 13 on the season. And trims that lead to 4-3. Really, to me, and, and maybe I'm harping on it too long, but the outlet pass from, from Bach yep. to Lensmeyer really got the Huskies moving in the right direction, and now they win the draw. And they're right back at it. This is Engler. Engler had Andover's second goal to cut it to 3-2. to two. And Andover, down by one, has it right back. And over on the near side again is Ella Thorson, who had the assist on that goal that pulled Andover to within one. She works out on top. Now gets it into the middle. And now way over to the far side. That is Engler. Engler moves into the middle, trying to get a shot away. Had it poked off her stick. And now retrieves outside the 12. And oh, by the way, that assist for Thorson, her seventh of the season. And again, goal number 13 for Delage. Thorson trying to power her way into the front. Spins, trying to get a shot away. Can't look for a cutter there. Hangs on to it. Been huge 
here in the second half for Andover, doing a great job over there controlling play. And now grabbing it was Myla Evers. She had it bumped away. Evers is going to get it. And now Evers is going to get it back out to Delich. Delich powers her way in, trying to get a shot. Goes to the goal line, extended now behind the net. Under 17 to go on the half. Hand over the ball, down by one. This is Delich looking for the cutter, and it ends up with Centennial. And the Cougars are going to continue play as they move it forward. Good defensive play by Noel Hemmer. And now the Cougars right back at it. Charging the other way, Caitlin Hemmer. Hemmer gives it up, and I think that's Cody now. Oh, it is Hemmer still. And now she sends it across. And this is Ella Wiest. Wiest into a double team. Backs out of there. Pivotal possession here, Stace. East. Wiest into the middle. Got a shot away. And she might get a free position. We'll see about this. There she is. She's going to get a free position. Ella Wiest coming in. Nine goals, two assists. So she's got a terrific shot. And That's she's going to try edge. and put Centennial up by two again. Back to goalie. Powers her way in, and it's blocked away. So Bach, a great job of nice. staying squared up as That's a huge Weiss thing. came running in uh, from the eight meters. So it's Weist again. And we, we've seen the strategy of step and shoot, and she just kept her run. And Bach got the stick in the way. Here's Weezed again. Nine goals coming in. Out at the 12. And now swings it off to the left. This is Hemmer. Little jab step. Backs out of there. I always have to know where O'Hearn is on the field. As right now. Cody is the cutter. And she's on the sideline and. That's where Andover would prefer she was. And she's going to come back out there right now. Just it's right. a big spot. There's Centennial with it way out on the right. Now they work it behind, 14.45 to go. Browsing comes out, by the way. That allows O'Hearn to get back in as they make that change on the fly. Another fly change here coming. Cody. Four. And O'Hearn playing catch right now. That's Back Cody in again. is Jarpy. And Jarpy put it on the ground, but Centennial's going to hang on. There's Dennis right at that 30-yard line, and she can't step over that. Almost got to that one. Here's O'Hearn just inside the 12, now working on that 12-meter fan. Now it's Jarpy. Jarpy O'Hearn, uh, Jarpy, a good double team. Now a ground ball and a chance for Andover to pick it off. They get it to the goalie, Bach. That was really a nice play. And making that play was Lensmeyer. On the ground, Thinnis, she can't get to it. And on a hop, this is an opportunity for Tammy. It's got to be up there. Yeah, it's Andover. Centennial because uh, Tammy had possession, had momentum, and the Centennial defender stepped right in front. Here's Tammy is going to begin her oh. run, and then she gets decked. Oh, my. That, and, and she got knocked down by O'Hearn, and I, I, I'm surprised that isn't a yellow. That I mean, was... that, that's a trip all the way. And maybe O'Hearn's getting the benefit of the doubt. Tammy's going to go. She'll shake it off. And then O'Hearn runs into Tammy again, and wow, I – I, I am really surprised that, was a that, that there wasn't a stick that time that there wasn't more on Ella O'Hearn. I just don't know how Centennial gets it back after all of that. And and Brad Geis has got to be frustrated by that. From what I saw up here, um, you you almost could have pulled a yellow on that one. That was a pretty good swing of the stick that time. And- 12.43. Yeah, I agree. We got a ground ball, and here comes Centennial. Still up by one. That's Cody. Two goals in the game. And she's going to work off to the left and now to the goal line and set it up. And they're going to try and take the air out of the ball, so to speak. Yeah. A little bit. Clock continues to tick as we approach 12 minutes remaining here in the second. 
O'Hearn on the left. Begins her cut. O'Hearn wearing number nine. I think she got away with one in reality a moment ago. It would really be interesting to ask the officials what they saw when when Tammy went down. That that looked like a trip. Here's O'Hearn. Double team comes, showing her speed off to the right, and then she'll back out of there. She is terrific. So strong. Looking for the spot where she thinks she could find and penetrate that area to get a good angle for that shot, but... Huskies have been moving their feet and very active defensively, not allowing a lane. I mean, you're, ho- you're holding Yeah, the but they're almost team. playing a zone right now, and at some point as we get later and later, they're going to probably have to come out and challenge because right now they're sitting back, kind of set up a wall on that 8-meter line, Joe. Correct. And and eventually, Brad Guy's going to have to say we might need to gamble a little bit. And here's O'Hearn as they try and clear it out and create an alley. And... They're, they're trying to isolate O'Hearn here on the near side. Now they're going to come out and challenge, and they knock her down way outside the 12-meter. And, and yellow. That's yeah, Venice is going to get the yellow there. But you, you're getting to that point where you're really right. going to need to come out and challenge. And, and that time they came right out, bracketed, and came at O'Hearn as she was just standing outside the 20. Taking some slow steps, watching that clock work. And uh, definitely a move. They need to come out and play aggressive, force the turnover, and they tried that time with the bracket. Then just picks up uh, the yellow, but I think you're still going to have to see the, the Huskies come out much more aggressive here. Well, you got force. Cody with O'Hearn behind her with 11 see to go. See what they do here. Yeah, yep. hold on and give it about a minute. Till they get uh, their player back in finish. O'Hearn put it on the ground. Jarpy's out there. And she's going to try and power her way in. Doesn't draw the foul. They get it into Cody, and she let it fly and scores her third of the game. So for the third time tonight, Cody from O'Hearn and Centennial up by two again. That was a catch and release. Yeah. Whoa. That was a snipe that went up top to beat Bach. But uh, I'll tell you, just one pass to a cutting Cody. Caught it on one step, and before she even stepped for the follow-up, she had it released. And that snipe of a shot, and that puts Centennial back up by two, now five to three with ten and a half to play. Or her and a goal, now three assists, three goals for Cody in the game. 5-3 Centennial. Still plenty of time, but a big draw here. Popped into the air. Cody against Delich. And Cody did something wrong. Delich is going to get it. And Delich is going to begin a run. Centennial's been very aggressive, even at midfield. As they, they challenge all over the field, and then that one's knocked out of the stick there of Engler. Goes over to the near sideline. Centennial gets it back. They, they have been aggressive defensively all over the field. And here's Weist. Gives it up. O'Hearn. O'Hearn's going to power her way in. Has some room. Gets into the middle and scores. Works off to the right. And that's her second of the game. And, you know, the, the Andover didn't get back. And she powered her way to the front. And you could tell she was trying to get just enough of a space to release that shot. She split the defense, got the spacing, and snapped off. A wrister there for O'Hearn. That's her 14th goal of the season. Cody scored just moments ago. That was her 13th goal of the season. And now Centennial has the largest lead of the game for the Cougars as they have doubled up and over 6-3 to three with 9.50 to play. And for O'Hearn, two goals, three assists, 5.9. Delich forces it forward, Andover trying to control the ground ball, and it's grabbed right back by Centennial. Big ground ball win there. Noel Hemmer, and she's going to give it up, and that's Wiest. Wiest had it knocked away. A big spot for Andover. They've got to control one of these ground balls, and they do over on the far side. And, and, and Andover is... 
Got to get it to the front and move quickly now. They got to start winning some draws. And put this one in the net. Here's Shruby. Shruby got knocked down early in the game and had to come out. Uh, she she certainly has played since, but she was shaken up early in this one. Coming up on nine to go. Shruby works toward the front. And now we've got a whistle. And that uh, that shot that Shruby absorbed earlier kind yeah. of really did was an indicator of what this game was going to be like. No doubt. Steve Thompson, Joe Rulin from Husky Stadium tonight. Girls lacrosse and over hosting Centennial, a battle of three and ones. Been a good matchup. Low scoring game, very physical, outstanding defense. Two talented teams that really been all over it. And Centennial certainly been the aggressor defensively. That's quite a play over there by Clough. Clough can't come up with the ground ball and Andover hangs on, but they they have had no luck. And now they're going to get it to Delich and see what she can do. Delich trying to force her way in front, gets a shot. Knocked down by Bresney. Well, they got it in the hands of Delich, and she got a good shot away, but Bresney made another big save. and that, That's probably three huge saves here tonight. And now quite a run down the field for Jarby. She's going to go to the goal line, extended near his side. Anna Jarby, a senior. And, and you can tell Cody and O'Hearn have played a lot of lacrosse, the way they work together. In the way they move and the way they feed off each oh, other. Oh, they can read each other yeah, well. Yeah, absolutely. Stoppage of play here. This one's going to come outside the 12. Jarpy, she's got options. O'Hearn to her right. She's going to move into the middle. Over to the 8, looking for a penalty. Doesn't get it. That foul doesn't come, and now it's O'Hearn on top. Centennial does a good job of ball movement. Maybe it's just a weave, but you're seeing some motion uh, for the most part. And O'Hearn sends a pass up top here. And Jarby. certainly she and uh, Cody have had a night. Cody with three goals, O'Hearn with two. Jarpy just didn't. Under seven to go in this game. Uh, Centennial led it 4-2 at the half. And I, I go back to Delich being robbed by Bresney right before the half, just seconds remaining, had that free position, and Delich had a terrific shot and couldn't pay it off. And, and like I say, both goalies have been great, but Bresney's made three outstanding saves here tonight and that, that's really been the difference in this one you kind of see as they make that exchange confident with even those little quick shuffle passes yep. as they weave by one another now O'Hearn takes it behind the cage O'Hearn's out there Jarpy in front they rotate around and right now Andover really not pressuring and like I say, they're going to have to pick their spots with under six to go in the game, down by three, that they're going to have to start to gamble and get some turnovers. This is Cody. Allie Cody, wearing number seven, has a hat trick here tonight. And, hey, they're taking, there's no sense of urgency for them no, to move. absolutely not. Approaching five minutes to play here in the second half. And uh, this this is, this is where the shot clock, in my opinion, uh, yeah. is huge. And mm -hmm. that, you know, a, a team's got to run plays and take shots. And here's Cody. Makes that burst into the middle. And she's probably going to get her a free position here. And she will. So Eva Bach in another tough spot. Here's Cody looking for number four. Steps, shoots, and it's blocked out of there. Job by Bach. Bach the Rock yeah. makes a critical save here. They keep Absolutely. this to just a three goal deficit. As uh, about four and a half to play by the time Bach completes his pass. Looking to throw someone open. She'll drop it down low. Latinity. Here comes Andover and a good run over midfield. And this is Delich with speed. 
Delich has a goal in the game. And they, down by three, don't have a lot of time. And they, they, they have got to go. Definitely a go time yeah. offensively. And, and even a, a on qu- defense, they're going to need the pressure. Yeah, a quick one here and then win a face off. Oh, they had a cutter coming right down the middle. Delich. And we got a player knocked down, and this is going to be a free position. It's one of the Andover Huskies. Got knocked over, and I think that was Tammy that got just decked. And she is going to get that free position. And she needs to cash us in for sure with the clock on the move and 3.30 to go. Let's, let's get set up. She's going to get the ball here. and Tammy's got to let it fly. Power her way in. Can't get the shot away. She might get another free position. I think she will. It's just because yeah. she got close, uh, Centennial diffused a scoring but, opportunity. But, but this plays uh, into Centennial's hand with the clock on the move. Absolutely. So, you know, she steps, she shoots, and it goes wide. I think she wanted to bounce that closer to yep. the net, but with that pressure, pulled that trigger, and it caused it to bounce just about a foot or two in front of her with that high candy hop that went over the top of the cage. Lensmeyer, a good scoop on that clear attempt by Centennial. They're right back at it, under three to go. And Andover gets it down low. And now, once again, it, it is go time down by three. They got to get it to the front of the net. This is Delich. It does have a goal. Once again, Rob. Good move into the middle. Delich in on the goaltender. Blocked out of there by Bresney. Another monster save by Peyton Bresney. Wow. Boy, I'll tell and, you, Delich broke the yeah. ankles of that defender with yeah. that quick move. Terrific move, and all the credit to Bresney. Yeah, Bresney, I, she, uh, that's uh, four tremendous saves, point-blank opportunities. Randover turned away, a little like the Wild on some of those breakaways versus Dallas the other night. But uh, timeout. Timeout. As O'Hearn just going to set the stick down with the ball there with 2.01 to go, and just a great opportunity and all the credit to Peyton Bresney. I, I would say now, Joe, she has made four flat out gigantic saves in this game. If not, who knows? Maybe we're six six. Maybe Andover's got the lead. Yep, you're right. And I mentioned last year she had a record of yep. eleven and three. She kind of split a little bit of time with a senior goalie, but then they kind of saw that edge talking to the head coach. Uh, you kind of saw that differential piece come out with Bresney and Bresney, you know, hey, a sophomore last year, a junior starting as a freshman, all that experience is really paying off as she has been a brick wall back there tonight. And you see Brad Guy is right there talking to his team with 201 to go in the game. Centennial leading it. Final game of the month for Andover. They have two next week, and they're on the road at Totino Grace Monday at Osseo Park Center on Wednesday. And then Monday, May 8th at Champlin Park. Next home game against the Tornadoes on Wednesday, May 10th. Meanwhile, for Centennial, uh, final game of the month here. They're back in action in a week at Robbinsdale Armstrong. And we uh, saw the Falcons uh, take down the Tornadoes on Monday night, Joe. And they are a talented team. That'll be a great matchup. Oh, that will. Uh, And a very physical matchup as uh, Robbinsdale as it loves to play a quick, a fast-paced game, but also, if need be, they don't mind being a little physical as well. So uh, that'll be an excellent matchup. And at Robbinsdale Armstrong, Centennial, in their final moments here, it's all about hey, winning those face-offs when you can. You're going to be on defense. You're going to need to come out if you're Andover and just be aggressive and uh, stack it however you can defensively with layers to try to create the turnover. Yeah, and the, the challenge is coming out of this timeout. It's going to be on the stick of L.O. O'Hearn. And Correct. If, if they come out and are too aggressive, they know that she can make a move or two and get right in front of Eva Bach. Bach's done a nice job tonight, but it, it's hard to argue with these seniors up front. L.O. O'Hearn, Callie Cody, 
And, of course, Anna Jarpy have worked together for a long time. They have played so well. And we, we've seen three goals scored by Callie Cody on just terrific assists by O'Hearn. So O'Hearn to Cody tonight has done a lot of damage. She has a hat trick. Five points for O'Hearn, including those three assists and two goals here tonight. And we Bra- come out of the timeout here. Correct. Browsen, Lillian Browsen picked up the first goal of the game, and that was her second of the season and uh, got things going one nothing for centennial early here's o'hearn trying to work to the right now it goes all the way out to the middle and over all over very aggressive as they challenge out near the middle of the field and o'hearn running around over to midfield and she's going to go back into her own end splits the defense cuts up what a talent. Great player. Just tough to continue to run. And hey, all they're trying to do, it's almost like defending Seth Curry, right? You want to get the ball out of the hand. Yeah, and Haley Bird probably said, all right, we're, we're going to get it to O'Hearn. We're going to let her run around for the yeah. final two minutes of the game, and we'll we'll see you next time. You can see Andover almost triangulating. If they can, they get that thing out of O'Hearn. She backs in. And they're going to call her, O'Hearn, for the foul. Yeah, and an opportunity for Andover. So, 103 to go. The longest of long shots down by three. And they skip it into the middle, and the ground ball picked up. And let's see what the Huskies can do here. On a mission. They get it into the middle. Lensmeyer was turned away. That was a good catch in traffic. Moving it up top now and then losing possession there. On I think the Cody ball. scooped it up and then got it to the goalie, Bresney. 30 seconds to play. It appears Centennial will take home a victory. And they're going to move to 4-1 and one on the year. Andover's going to fall to 3-2. and two. A Ground ball right in front. Opportunity here. And we got a foul. That's not going to be a goal. They called a foul there and a yellow. And I think Centennial will just be able to clear it down the field, and that's going to do it. Here's another look here at the opportunity. Trying to that's Evers. Yeah, trying Yellow. to pick up the loose change. And then some frustration set in. Evers has the yellow, and now just a matter of 19 seconds to tick off the clock, and Centennial will move to 4-1 and one and over to 3-2. and two. Oh, they send it down the field. They have a ground ball with seconds remaining in this game. The rain is held off. And it, it's one of those where I think Brad Geis is going to be able to say, hey, you know, we, we got robbed in a few. This was a very close game. Centennial's going to win at 6-3 to three the final, as we mentioned a moment ago. They're 4-1. and one. Andover falls to 3-2. and two. Once again, up next for the Huskies, three in a row on the road, Monday, May 1st at Totuna Grace, Wednesday, May 3rd at OPC. That one will be at Carl A. Tunfield, Nacio. And then Monday, May 8th at Champlin Park. And then that big one uh, every year, Anoka, comes in on Wednesday, May 10th. Uh, Centennial, as we mentioned just a moment ago, uh, they will be at Robbinsdale Armstrong in a week to start the month of May. But uh, quite a night, Cody with three and O'Hearn with two goals and three assists in this Centennial victory tonight. Jeff. Well, you heard of the Miami Sound Machine. This is the Centennial Scoring Machine yeah. as uh, the two of them, O'Hearn and also Cody, combined for five of the six goals for Centennial. Impressive duo. And impressive squad. As you get a look here for the Cougars. You got to look at there. Look at the upcoming QC broadcast. And it's baseball tomorrow. Get a chance to call that with Jim Erickson as Champlain Park travels here to Andover. So a big by step Boise. up. I oh. mean, you get to work with some quality. <laughs> I think it's supposed to be 60 tomorrow. Yeah. New, uh, boys well, lacrosse. And you get to work with Jim Erickson. No, oh, of course. Eye candy himself. And then Champlain Park at Anoka, followed by softball, Blaine at uh, Andover. That's on May 2nd. And then on May 4th, it'll be Elk River at Champlain Park. That's baseball as well that's what's coming up here on qc tv big thanks to everyone here at andover always friendly hospitality big thanks to ryan mush 
and our great QCTV crew. Joe Rule and I'm Steve Thompson. Our final score, Centennial 6, Andover 3. Good night from Husky Stadium.